Coming to Storms. This is one of the stories that I call the power over stories. We have certain stories of Christ which shows that he has power over sin, power over illness, power over nature, power over demons, power over many things. Well, this one right here, you have the story of him having power over the nature and storms and also the power over demons. He's uh, going to the Gentile side of the lake. As you stand on the Jewish side of the lake, Jesus was standing there and he was teaching the people. Now, now, now with that, he's facing away from the sea, of La the sea of Galilee, facing the people, and behind him are the hills that go up. Now, you, you have to understand the. The sea is 600 feet below sea level. So there's hills all around it. And so he's facing west. And as the sun goes down in front of him, it becomes a shadow. The shadow comes across the people and it's time for them to go home. But as Jesus turns around, he looks to the other side of the sea. And the sun is still shining on those hills. And I have stood there, and I have stood there in the evening, in the, in the early evening, late afternoon, and I looked to the other side, and it's amazing. Those hills just turn red. As I, as I look in the hills, I realize that's what Jesus was looking at. He says, we need to go to the other side of the sea. Well, as I mentioned, those hills surround there's, there's two ways that wind can suddenly come down, either through the Valley of the Doves or down through the Jordan Valley. I personally think this particular storm, the, the wind is coming off the Mediterranean, heading north, hits, hits Mount Hermon or Mount Hermon, comes down the upper Jordan Valley and hits the sea. Now, the sea is 600 feet below sea level, which is, by the way, the, the lowest freshwater lake in the world. It's about seven or eight miles wide, 13 miles long, but it goes down 150 feet. It's a deep lake. So when that storm hits suddenly, it can produce waves up to 20 feet. Fishermen didn't go out there. They fished along the shore of the lake. That's where the best fishing's at anyway. Every family had experiences of these storms. They had fathers and brothers and uncles and sons who had lost their lives out on the Sea of Galilee. Now, they, uh, when Jesus talked, where is your faith? Well, they'd actually had faith to go with him across the sea. But Jesus pushed their faith even farther. Where is your faith in the midst of the storm? might have faith to follow Jesus where he wants you to go, but when the storms happen, why is it, Lord, I, I followed you this far, why would you let this happen? Well, when they get to the other side, they meet a demon-possessed man. I want to think about the, the end of the story when the people come out after the demons had left the man and they went into the pigs and they were drowned, that they saw this man healed, sitting there quietly, fully clothed, listening to Jesus, and they were afraid and asked Jesus to leave. You ask, well, why would they do that? Well, think about it. if you went to church one Sunday and you came out to find that all the cars are gone. You found out that someone had basically sold them all to raise some money to give to this destitute family on the other side of the tracks, people that didn't attend your church, people that you didn't really care about, a little bit loony, and yet it was going to change their lives. But still, who, who had permission to sell all these cars? 
Think about those pigs. Every family in this village and several villages, they had one pig or two pigs or five pigs or, or ten. They joined together and had the same herdsmen watch over all of them. This was their livelihood. This was their food, if nothing else. But, 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 but this, was, this, this is how they lived. Suddenly, it's all gone. The economy of these little villages is gone. Why? For old Sam right there, they don't even care about a wild man who, who, who means nothing to them. No, they were, they, they were upset. They were afraid. They asked Jesus to leave. And yet, when Jesus comes back later, 4,000 of them come out to hear him teach. You know, by this point, they've been listening to this man who had been healed, and oh, they, they were ready to listen to Jesus now. If he could do that for this man. Yes, he destroyed their pigs. But they suddenly got a perspective, uh, priorities, that if, they can do, if he can do that for this man, what, they, what can they do for him? For, for, for them. No, Jesus fed 5,000. And on top of that, uh, archaeologists have found uh, uh, the remains of about 10 churches on that side of the lake that's felt that goes back to this man, the testimony that this man had and the influence that he had that, 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 that thousands upon thousands of people come to Christ. Probably one of the, one of the greatest evangelist in church history and we don't even know his name well come back next week when we give you more insights on the story of the week we'll see you next week